coming to you with words and teaching that will change your life forever. All things that you will ever need in your life, they're wrapped up in the Word. Go for the Word. You need to understand this thing. And when you get a hold of it, keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. The Bible says in the city of Ephesus, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Can you shout amen? I said on the cross that I must follow. In the name of Jesus, prosperity is mine. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down. He brings he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Yay! Pastor Chris, worth hearing. Glory to his holy name forever. I want to bring a very important thought to your mind. Why it is that many times Christians who are somewhat knowledgeable in the things of God have uh, less resorts than what they really expect to have. Well, the Bible says, though we walk in the flesh, not in human bodies, we do not war according to the flesh. Then it tells us that there are weapons given to us. Now, you do not sleep with your weapons. You're given weapons for warfare. Hallelujah. So, I want to read something to you from the book of James. Would you turn in there? James chapter number 5. Glory to God. I'm excited in my spirit because of God's word. Are you excited in your spirit? Yes. Hallelujah. Lord. I love Jesus. I said, I love Jesus. Shall sure you love him? Yes. Then listen to his words. James chapter number five. From verse 16, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. What do you mean confess your faults? doesn't mean I come to you and say, please, I have some faults to confess to you. <laughs> well, he's saying, when we wrong each other, we should be able to own up and say, I did it wrong. That's what I did wrong. Praise the Lord. I was wrong. See? That's what he's saying. Confess your faults. See? Declare that you were wrong. He's not saying, I sit before you and say, you see, in 1962, I was the one that actually stole that thing. You remember? And then, you know, and then you start yours too. If we talk like that, both of us at the end, We'll be looking for somebody to lead us to Christ, I'm telling you. <laughs> we would have so saturated and inundated ourselves with negative thoughts and remembrance of sins that we wouldn't be sure of our salvation anymore. But that's not what he's talking about. Acknowledge your force. That's what he's saying. See? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Confess your force. The word confess also means acknowledge. Okay? Acknowledge your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I want y'all to read that together. Want to go? The effectual, effectual Effectual, 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 fervent prayer 
of a righteous man availeth much. He's talking to us about prayer now. He's telling us that we can effect changes. He has to remind us. He has to let us know. He has to inform us. Because without God's word informing us, we do not know. So he's telling us. Because he knows I may not think my prayers will work. He knows I may be looking for somebody to help me pray. So he's telling me. Let's read it again. He says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. He's telling me. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man works. It produces results. It works. Don't despair. It works. Don't think nothing is happening. Hey, your prayer works. That's what he's telling you. He wants you to know your prayer works. Don't think you're too small. Your prayer works. He didn't say the effect of fervent prayer of a lot of people. No. He didn't say the effect of fervent prayer of the majority. No, he didn't say the effectual fervent prayer of many ministers. No, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. A righteous man, that's all it takes. One man, that's all it takes. Effectual fervent, why it's such a construction? Can I, can I read it to you from the Amplified? I want you all to read it again from the King James one more time. Let me read it to you from the Amplified version. I believe it will help you to catch the picture. He says, confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins. And pray also, pray also pray also Now, I want you to, for the moment, mark, pray. I want you to see some things here now. Number one is this confess. Number two, pray. He lets us know it's for a reason. There's a reason why you're going to pray. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. Okay? Now, when you declare your fault and say, I was wrong, what does it say you should do? Pray. Pray one for another. Why should you pray for the other one? Why do you pray? You see, prayer helps you develop something within you. Those that you pray for, you do not criticize. How many of you know that? When you pray for someone, you don't criticize him. When you pray for your colleague at work, for your friend, your brothers and sisters in Christ, you become more patient with them. 
Why? Because you're seeing in them the fruit of your prayer. Now, if you don't, don't say, well, well, I haven't seen it. No, you have to see it when you pray. That's what faith is all about. You don't see it when you face them. You see it when you pray. He said, when you pray, believe. When do you believe? When you pray. Hello? And, and you believe by seeing. You see the picture. Hallelujah. So that's important. All right. Now let me read that to you again from, from the Amplified. And I'm taking you somewhere. Confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your sleeps, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone and mind of mind and heart. Then, the area of emphasis that we got to. The King James says, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. Okay? All right. Now, here it says, the earnest is trying to explain to us the King James rendering, the effectual, fervent prayer. What does that mean? What is the meaning of effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man? What prayer is effectual and fervent? He says, the earnest, the earnest prayer he uses one word, earnest prayer. That's what King James is referring to when he says the effect of fervent prayer. He says the earnest prayer. What do you mean, earnest? What is earnest prayer? When you say, I prayed earnestly, what do you mean by praying earnestly? Now, you know, you, you can go, do it, Lord, do it, Lord, do it, Lord. Yes, Lord, do it, Lord, do it, Lord. Do it, Lord, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, Lord. No, Jesus said, don't pray like the heathen, because you see, he says, they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. He said they use repetitions, vain repetitions, thinking that if they say it more, then they'll be heard. Jesus said, no, that, don't pray that word. It's not because he said it ten times that he's going to hear you. In his prayer, that means, come on, he says, heartfelt continued. So King James says, the effectual, that means the prayer that touches you. That prayer that you prayed, and somebody said, what did you say to God? You say, well, I was praying. What did you say? Well, some of you, you prayed this morning before coming. If I asked you, what did you pray about this morning before coming to church? Some of you wouldn't remember. You pray every day. Do you remember what you pray about? Many, many don't remember. They just pray. Because it's their religion to pray. Did you pray yesterday? Come on, did you pray yesterday? Yes. You remember what you prayed for? Some of you, some of you remember because you were asking for a new job. <laughs> you, you wouldn't let God off the hook. Because you've been calling on him the last three months. <laughs> this job is mine. <laughs> That's why you remember? Praise God. Amen. Well, I know a lot of you would remember what you prayed about. Because you're learning a lot of things, right? Praise God. Okay. So it's the earnest, which means heartfelt continued. It's hard felt. That's number one. It's continued. That's number two. In other words, we don't just say it and go off. We say it and, and our emotions are built into it. You know, there are different kinds of preachers. Preachers a lot of times are like lawyers. You understand? They, they've got a case to present. And the lawyer doesn't win that is not passionate about his case. He's got to become passionate. In other words, he should be wholly given to his convictions about the subject. 
Same thing with your preaching. You should be the first man to be convinced of your preaching, of your message. If you're not convinced, you're not going to convince anybody else. But you're the number one to be convinced of it. And now he brings it into, you know, Paul was both of them. He was a liar and he was a preacher. So he brings, well, not Paul this time, but this is James. And James also was a liar and was a preacher. Did you ever know James was a liar? He was a liar. He was number one liar. He was such a liar, he brought the law into Christianity. <laughs> Praise God. And James brings his idea into this thing by the Holy Ghost. He says, the effectual, the heartfelt, continued. He's talking about continuous pounding. It's coming from your heart. And you're taking it farther and you're pressing in. Pressing in. Now, you know, I'll tell you something. When you pray, Jesus said, believe. He had a reason for telling us, when you pray, believe. Because you can pray without believing. That doesn't mean you are unbelieving. You believe with your heart. Romans 10.10 10. It says, for with the heart, man believe it. You believe with your heart. And Jesus said, when you pray, believe. How, where do you pray? Your mouth. Where do you believe? Your heart. So when you pray, believe. Salvation is mouth and heart. You believe with your heart, God raised Jesus from the dead. You confess with your mouth his lordship and you're saved. Or rather you receive salvation. And eternal life is imparted to your spirit. Hallelujah. Now he says, when you pray, believe. And now James tells us the effectual, the heartfelt, continued prayer. The heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man availed much. He says, make no mistakes about it. It's working. It's working. When you pray to God, you feel it deeply what you're talking about. You become passionate about that thing. He says, hey, don't stop there. Carry it on. Carry it on. Because he knows sooner or later you're going to have a note of victory. Carry it on. Don't just talk with your lips. Oh God, you know, bless us. Bless us. Bless this nation. My uncle, my auntie, my cousins, my friends. Somebody said, plus God minus devil. <laughs> As far as he was concerned, that was the prayer for the day. Bless this food, O oh Lord, for Christ's sake. That is not prayer. God doesn't bless the food for Christ's sake. He blesses the food for your sake. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. Christ became poor for your sakes. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. It's for your sake. He blesses the food for your sake. Bless this food, O Lord, for Christ's sake. And, and, and a lot of us have prayed that prayer so long, we have never thought about it. The way you're looking at me now, it means many of you have prayed that prayer. <laughs> Bless this food, O Lord, for Christ's sake. It's not a prayer. You say, but so far God has answered it. Okay, until today. Because it says, the time of ignorance, God winked at. But now commands all men everywhere to repent. Now you know the truth. Don't pray like that. Hallelujah. So he blesses the food for your sake. For your sake. <laughs> Hallelujah. The inner heartfelt, 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 heartfelt. You know what it is. He's talking about your emotions coming to this. Your emotions coming to this. You feel it. It's an emotional thing. You become passionate about the case. Passionate.
Hallelujah. The Enos Hatfield continued. Continued now doesn't mean I prayed about it yesterday, I won't pray about it today, I won't pray about it tomorrow, I'll pray about it next week. That's not what it means by continued. He's talking about, let me, let me give you a picture. Now, I, I can push this man like this. You better be standing here, right? <laughs> okay, I can do this. <clears throat> God is saying, that was nice, but you, you didn't come. You didn't finish it. <clears throat> That's what many of us do in our prayer. We do that to the devil. And then he comes back. And we go again. <laughs> so that's the reason many of you keep rebuking the headache. You rebuke it one time and you go, go! And then it goes. Comes back next week. <laughs> the heart failed. Mm. I'm not going to let it come back. The heart failed. That means I put my attention now. Uh -huh. Now I've been doing, go! Now, had fared. I'm concerned. I'm touched by this thing. I put my attention on it. Had fared, continue. Go, you got to go. Continued. It may be for an hour. It may be for two hours. But you are praying. Until you know that you know that you know on the inside of you, you got it, man. He gives us an example. I want you to look at the example. Now let me read it. Let me read the rest of it. It's the heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes. Oh boy, I like this. Makes. Tremendous power available. It makes tremendous power. Oh boy. It makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Whew. If I didn't have the amplified for that verse alone, I would buy one. Because I'd like to read that again and again to me. The Enos. Had failed continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Hey, hey, it's effectual, it's effective. Are you hearing this? Dynamic in its working. When you know that, you know, listen, you're praying inside that room, but you are making an impact. That's what he's telling us. He says, hey, don't think you're so small. You can make an impact. Don't wait till everybody gathers. You can make an impact. Had felt. That's what's needed. Continued. That's what's needed. Have you ever wondered why you pray and sometimes don't receive answers? What do you say in your prayers? Hallelujah. I thank you, God, that we can come to you and that you answer all our prayers through the name of Jesus. Amen. No, that's not the right way to pray. Okay. We don't pray through the name of Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, I never knew that. Maybe that's why I didn't receive any answer prayer lately. Maybe. And you know, in this book, Pastor Chris is teaching us the principles of prayer and he's also giving us a model of prayer. Discover deep secrets of an effective prayer life in this new release by Pastor Chris. Praying the right way. The principles are simple but the results are lifelong. To order, call any of the numbers now displayed on your screen or online at www.christembassyonlinestore.org. sovereign responsibility as Christians
to come into this ministry of prayer. We have to understand that it is not optional. When we feel like it and when we don't feel like it. We have to stop being so concerned about our needs in coming to the ministry of prayer that's given to every believer. Otherwise, we are going to be held responsible for the things that we should have prayed about and we didn't pray. When you understand why you should pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, when you understand why, it will show you who you really are. It means that you are in the place of Jesus. Listen, it means you are the voice of Jesus. It means you're standing in his stead. You can't pray to him anymore because you are in his place. Oh. You pray as a priest. You speak as a king. Why? You are a royal priest. Somebody shout hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Leave Alaba Shandala Bahaya. Oh, glory to God. You say, Father, I pray for all those who live in this estate tonight. I pray in the name of Jesus. The angels of God surround this place. The hand of God is upon every one of us. The presence of the Lord is in this place. I speak as a king. I pray as a priest. Oh, glory to God. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost tonight. This teaching, the priestly ministry of the believer, an expose on prayer is a message you must listen to again and again to take you to a new level in your priestly responsibilities as a Christian. In this six-part series, you will learn to pray as a priest and speak like a king that you are. It is available in DVD, audio and video CD, audio and video cassettes. Call today to place your orders or log on to www.christembassyonlinestore.org. All messages by Pastor Chris are available in downloadable formats on the Christ Embassy online store. To attend a Christ Embassy Church nearest to you, call any of the numbers now displayed on the screen. Pastor Chris, worth hearing. James chapter number 5, verse 17. I can read it first to you from the King James since many of you are children of King James. Verse 17, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. What does it mean subject to like passions as we are? He says Elijah was, just, was like any, any one of us. He could get hungry. You know, some people wonder, does Pastor Chris eat? I do eat. Does he sleep at all? I do sleep. <laughs> Does he ever get tired? I sometimes do get tired, and that's the reason for the sleeping. <laughs> Are you still there? He says, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. He was like any of us. Elijah was like you. He said, ah, me? 
my life. <laughs> Some people think they are so different, especially in the negative. They think they are so different that God has never seen anything like what they are going through. Well, God's big enough to handle you. <laughs> Amen. Elijah was a man subject like passions as we are. The Amplified Version says, Elijah was a human being with a nature such as we have. Now, I hope you understand that construction because you've got to be careful. Hello? Hi. I said, I hope you understand that construction. You know why I'm telling you that? You sure? Because, you know, when you read various translations, you need to understand some things. Never allow semantics destroy revelation. I said that again. Never allow semantics destroy revelation. I said that for a reason. He says, Elijah was a man. He says, um, a human being with a nature such as we have. He didn't stop there. He explained the meaning of what he said. Because he did not have the nature that we do have. He was not born again. We are born again. We are born with a new nature. The nature of the new creation, which was not available in Elijah's day. Come on. Now, I, I, I read something like this and I don't get confused. So why should any of you get confused? Say, I can't get confused. Come on. All right. So, does that settle that? All right. Now, let me read further. He says, Elijah was a human being with a nature such as we have, with feelings, he explains, with feelings, affections, and a constitution like ours. See? So, he, 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 he went through the kind of things that we would go through, humanly speaking. He could hurt. He could be angry. He could be wondering, is God really going to do something? You know, sometimes you think, hey, I wish I had that much faith like so-and-so does. Relax. What he hasn't told you is whether or not he felt the way you feel. So he tells us about Elijah. And then let's read what, what happened here. Let me read it to you from the King James. He says, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. Look at that. He prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth, but the space of three years and six months. Boy, that's a long time to be without rain. He prayed earnestly. That's the kind of prayer he's talking about. The heartfelt, continued prayer. He prayed earnestly that it might not rain. Now, some of you prayed. You were standing by the roadside and you, you're coming out of work and you wanted to go somewhere and you said, Lord Jesus, it's about to rain. I'm going to go stop it. And then you stood out there. The drizzling started. You say, it's not going to rain. <laughs> In Jesus name stop rain go stop clear I cast you out the Bible says Elijah prayed earnestly why because he was going to be changing the course of things the course of nature it was necessary that rain should fall. It was normal at that time for the rain to fall. But he would not let the rain fall. So what is he going to do? He can't just come and say, rain, shot. No, he, he... You 
You see? Heartfelt. Continued. Heartfelt. Continued. You look at your family. The way things are going. It's been for so long. And it, it means it's going to go on like this. Maybe for all time. But you want to change. What are you going to do? Had felt continued. Now, someone says, I've been praying for a long time. Well, what kind of prayer? Mm, oh God, <laughs> change it. Oh God. No, no, no. That's not the meaning of had felt. Um, um. <laughs> that is not the meaning of what? Had felt. You're crying out of self-pity. Self-pity destroys faith. Did you ever read when the Bible says about, about Jesus, he was moved with compassion. He was moved, motivated by compassion. Something on the inside turned. It's in the heart. It doesn't have to be filled with sorrow. He was moved with compassion. He wasn't complaining. Had felt, continued. That means you're bearing all your energies toward this thing. John G. Lake said, there's something in the call of a soul that makes things happen. That cannot be denied. You set your attention on it. And you want one thing, the change that you desire. It doesn't happen by your frowning. It doesn't happen by your clenching your fists. It doesn't happen by your shouting. It's just a state of mind. You become concerned about it. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now if we were to go into Second King, uh, First Kings where this whole thing happened, you would, you would get the full picture. Right, let me explain further to you. It says, um, verse 17, and then, sorry, verse 18, and then he prayed again, and the heaven supplied rain, and the land produced its crops. Now let me tell you what Elijah actually did there, according to the record we have in 1 Kings, 18th chapter. When he prayed again, the Bible tells us, he bowed himself before the Lord in his prayer. This certainly was not a five-minute prayer because he bowed himself there and as he prayed to God, he expected a change. God had told him everything was all right. Rain was going to come. But even though God said it, the man still had to pray to cause it to happen. John Wesley said, it seems that God will do nothing except we pray. He didn't say God will do nothing. He said it seems so. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Prayer has become something in our day that we find ourselves looking for formulas so we can get rid of that relationship. We just want to push the buttons. But it doesn't work that way. Because prayer is based on relationship. You understand? Prayer is based on relationship. You can't just say, give me the five steps to prayer. Prayer is based on relationship. Are you listening now? You would have to pray. If you're going to make changes, you would have to pray. You need to pray. And there are things in your life that will not change until you pray like this. The things that are not going to change until you pray like this. 
How much does it take to pray like this? Just the seriousness of purpose. That's all it takes. And your whole life will be changed. Your whole future will be set on course. Just if you would decide to do it. In one day, you can change the rest of the future. In one day. You know, many of you fast. You fast a lot without praying. You just fast. And then later you forget that you're fasting. <laughs> it's very easy to fast. Fasting and praying are two different things. So you can fast. That just means you didn't eat. But fasting and praying means that you're going off that food, taking your attention off the food, and taking the attention on to God. Not just off the food and moving around and doing everything you want to do. No, taking your attention off the food and on to God. And out to go in. Are you following this? Yes. Not that at 4 p.m. you remember, you almost ate something. Ah, I'm fasting today. <laughs> okay, no, 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 don't worry. I won't eat yet. I'm, I'm fasting. You should not forget your fasting. Because you, your state of mind at this time has changed. Fasting helps you to raise your spiritual antenna so you can hear from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You still there? Yes. Heartfelt continued prayer. Elijah prayed, and when he prayed and prayed and prayed, he called his servant. He said, find out what's happening out there. And then the young guy went out and looked up. Uh, he said, sir, nothing is happening. No rain, not yet. He, he continued praying. He sent him again, go find out. The young guy went out, looked, and said, sir, uh, nothing. Elijah continued praying. Why? The change must be now. The change must be now. Is there anything happening, boy? No, sir. Does Elijah get up? No. He goes on praying. What is he telling God? I don't know. But I just know one thing. He was praying earnestly. What do you mean, earnestly? It is not the words that he spoke that are important. It's the fact that his heart was in it. In what? In what he wanted. And that he continued in it. I saw a beautiful work of art. And I was fascinated. Because every detail in it was done by hand. With a hand brush. I was fascinated. And I looked at it and looked at it and looked at it. Several little points here and there. With different colors. I said, wow. i tell you what went through my mind. What went through my mind was the discipline that it took that guy to do that painting. Every point had to be done perfectly. Hours and days he spent on it. But you know what? He kept at it. Just doing it. Doing it. I imagine that his neck had pains. I imagine that sometimes he tried to straighten his back. I imagine that sometimes he got down and said, oh, Wow. I imagine sometimes he got thirsty. I imagine that he was distracted a lot of times, but there was something he had to do. This job had to be done. And he stayed there doing it. One after the other. Until the whole thing was done. And now it's done. And you look at it and you say, wow. I thought, how much would you pay just to have this done? Praise God. It's inspiring to think about prayer. It's wonderful to get involved in prayer. 
But it's greatest when you have prayed to look back after the prayer and say, look what God and me have done. <laughs> Both of us have done it. God and I have changed it. We've touched lives. You look back and say, wow. Look what we did. Thank God we prayed. You go, you go, thank God we prayed. July 4th, when you started that crusade, it was a prophecy some years ago. There was a prophecy that we were going to have crusades simultaneously in this city, se several places at the same time, on the same day. Several years ago, that prophecy was given. And on July 4th, you stepped right into prophecy. <laughs> And it was said that thousands would be gathered in various places in this very city. At the time that prophecy was given, it didn't look like it would ever happen. But we look back and say, thank you, Jesus. The word works. <laughs> I look at so many things happening today. And I look back and I say, wow, thank God we prayed. Say, God, we fasted. Say, God, we prophesied God's word. Say, God, we believed to see the glory of God in the land of the living. Thank God. The gospel works. Can you say amen? amen? So believe in success. Believe that when you pray, you can change things. Believe. He said, Elijah was a man subject to like passions. He didn't say there were many Elijahs. He says, Elijah alone prayed. And there was no rain for three and a half years. And then he, the same man, prayed again. Three and a half years later, he prayed again and opened the heavens for the rains to come down. Say, God, one man made a difference. You can make a difference. Can you shout amen, somebody? You can make a difference. That's what God is telling us. All you need is to set your attention on it. Put your heart there. He says, the heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man. Who is a righteous man? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away and all things have become new. Therefore, being justified by faith, declared righteous by faith, we are peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You are the righteous one. He says, the law came by Moses, but grace and reality came by Jesus Christ. What Elijah had was a shadow. What you have is reality. Can you shout him here? Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. He was made sin who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, glory to God. They which receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, they shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. They shall reign as masters. They shall reign as kings. Can you shout amen, somebody? Oh, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. He says the whole creation groaneth in travail, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And we know that we have arrived. Can you shout amen? amen? We have arrived. We are those who refuse to look. Look at the sin. Rather we look at the unseen. For the things that are seen are temporary. But the unseen are eternal. We can see the unseen. I said we can see the unseen. I see the glory of God in your life. I see the glory of God in your life. I see the glory of God in your life. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. He called us to pray. We have been summoned to prayer. Hallelujah. And the word has been given that when we pray, we will make a difference. I was born to make a difference. Jesus said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth truth. That whatsoever ye ask of the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. I'm ordained to receive an answer to every prayer. Can you shout amen, somebody? Oh, glory to God. I'm bringing forth truth. My prayers are heard. My prayers are answered. I am a priest of God. 
He has made us priests and kings unto God. We are not ordinary people. Glory to God. Anointed for the harvest. Anointed for the glory of God. Woo! Ah! Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. No wonder he says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. Glory to God. Can you shout amen, somebody? I know who I am. I said, I know who I am. Greater is he that is in me. Greater, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can effect changes. I can effect changes. I can effect changes. I can effect changes. Greater is he that is in me. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Give him praise, somebody. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. I'm what God says I am. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Oh, glory to God. Give him praise. Discover a new world of excitement at the Christ Embassy website. Watch Atmosphere for Miracles, a webcast of God's healing and miracles working power at our various crusades and services. You can also watch Love World for the best in Christian programming, ranging from live discussions, devotional, teaching, and much more. Listen to our Rhapsody of Realities audio devotional and receive a word from God for you that would make your day every day. Order online for our books, audio and videotapes, audio and video CDs at the online store. Do you want to know more about the ministry? or get a list of our TV broadcast schedule for your area? You can do that and more at the Christ Embassy website. Log on today at www.christembassy.org Faith is not mysterious to the child of God. There's not a child of God that lacks faith. It came with the gospel. When you received the gospel of Jesus Christ, that seed of faith was imparted to your spirit. But that little measure that you got is not enough for everything. It's got to grow. He said, if you have faith as a seed, what do you do to a seed? You plant it. Then you talk about the tensile nature of faith. Is it weak? Is it strong? Strong faith doesn't stagger. Strong faith maintains the confession in the face of staggering opposition. I have a book on this. It's titled, How to Make Your Faith Work. How to Make Your Faith Work. Oh, glory to God. To order, call any of the numbers now displayed on your screen or online at www.christembassyonlinestore.org.
exercising your spirit. He says the spirit bears us up in our weakness, in our limitation. The spirit supports us, props us up. Hallelujah. We don't know what we ought to be saying. We don't know how to go about this thing. But the Holy Ghost himself makes in a session with groanings. The love of Christ. I'm not only ready to be bound in Jerusalem, but also to die for the name of the Lord Jesus. For the name of the Lord Jesus. Are you going to the same heaven with that kind of fellow? Brothers and sisters, you have to think again. I mean, the gospel that we have embraced came to us through the blood of some other fellow. What kind of life are we living? Yielding to the Holy Spirit. If you listen to him, he will rejuvenate your life. If you listen to him, he says, I am God. Is there anything too hard for me? When he picks you up and starts out something with your life, you become a wonder. The impartation of the Spirit. The sick got healed. He took it to where the demon possessed was and dropped it on him and the demon checked out. Why? Because that handkerchief had a rub off of the anointing from Paul. Listen, you are better than a handkerchief. You want it? You want it? Take it! You want it tonight? Take it! The power of the Holy Ghost! Call these numbers now to place your orders or online at www.christembassyonlinestore.org.